AnimatedAnatomy.com. Hello, my name is Faris, and in this lesson, I will finally finish the series about the shoulder anatomy. In this shoulder anatomy series, I have explained first the bones, then the ligaments, then the muscles. I have explained the functions of muscles, the innervation of muscles, and now finally you reach the fifth video or the sixth video where I explain the blood supply to these muscles. There's also one more muscle, that's why I'm not sure whether it's five or six videos in this series. And the video was especially about the shoulder uh, structure called the rotator cuff. It's made up of four muscles and it's inside here. You don't see it because of these big muscles. This is also one very, very important video to see because of the function that the rotator cuff provides for the shoulder. Now let's start right away. I prefer in the beginning to to move remove the pectoralis major deltoid muscle and the trapezius muscle so we can see the inner structures. These big muscles are blocking our view. Normally I call this a virtual dissection because we remove part by part and we go all the way deeper and deeper into the body until we reach the bone. So let's start right away by removing this muscle here. This is the deltoid muscle. When we remove the deltoid muscle, you can already see some blood vessels here and here. The red ones are the arteries and the blue ones are the veins. The artery here, yet in the orange color selected, is the posterior humeral circumflex artery. This one here is the anterior humeral circumflex artery, right? And this one here, uh, right now, is the posterior humeral circumflex artery. So the deltoid muscle here is supplied by the posterior humeral circumflex artery. But if you look closely here, well, those are the branches of the thoracochromial artery. So this here artery is the thoracochromial artery that goes down there, but it leaves two branches here. The superior branch here is called the acromial branch of the thoracochromial artery, while this one here is the deltoid branch of the thoracochromial artery. Now you already know why that branch is called deltoid, because it supplies the deltoid muscle with blood. From here, we have the posterior humeral circumflex artery. That was pretty much the supply of the deltoid muscle. Now we should remove the bigger muscle here and that is the pectoralis major. In order to see the artery better and further we have to remove also this muscle here. This muscle is the pectoralis minor while the previous one was pectoralis major. When we remove it we finally see the branch here. This is called the pectoral branch. Now there you go, that was the pectoral branch of the thoracochromial artery. So now, before I go to remove the trapezius muscle, there is one more muscle I would like to remove. That's this muscle here. We're not interested in that at all. What we are interested in here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now we're looking here at the sternocleidomastoid muscle of the shoulder. You can see how many muscles in there are and how many veins and arteries. So let's just start with it right away. Uh, this muscle here is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The sternocleidomastoid muscle gets its blood from the superior thyroid artery, and that's this artery right here. If you look from this perspective, the superior thyroid artery gets its blood from the external carotid artery here. Now let's look at it from this perspective and I will draw for you right now, okay? You see this artery here, that one, don't confuse it with the artery that I will explain you right now, okay? Right below there should be another artery exit. As you can see, the ar this artery here, it goes here and above the sternocleidomastoid 
muscle and then it goes here right behind the ear and then back. Well the artery that supplies the sternocleidomastoid muscle is the occipital artery and the occipital artery also exits the external carotid artery down there. However, it doesn't go above, it goes here and then below the sternocleidomastoid muscle. In this 3D model, this is not modeled and this is not illustrated. However, I made it for you, so that's okay. Now we are looking here at the muscle, the, oh, this one, it was the background, this minor moment. So now we are looking at the muscle here, the serratus anterior muscle. While this here artery was the pectoral branch of the left thoracoacromial artery, this artery here is the lateral thoracic artery. As you can see, the lateral thoracic artery comes from the axillary artery, and that supplies the upper part of the serratus anterior muscle. However, if we look at it from here down below, it's not easy to see that. So this artery, well, let's look at it from the back. This artery, the axillary artery, is giving one branch away. Well, not branch, but another artery away. And that's called the subscapular artery, right? You can see it here. So the, our, our artery was literally going from the axillary artery over there. Right? This one is our artery and here it enters the axillary artery, okay? I mean the axillary artery gives away this artery, the subscapular artery, exactly. So the subscapular artery further gives away the thoracodorsal artery. And thoracodorsal artery, that's this one artery here, it supplies the lower part of the serratus anterior muscle. Now I will remove this serratus anterior muscle because we don't need it anymore. I will explain these muscles when I talk about the anatomy of the arm. So let's remove the biceps brachii. And this here is the triceps brachii. Let's remove that as well. One big muscle here that has remained is the trapezius muscle. And it would help us a lot if we could remove it. So let's do that. There we go. Now we see what's below the trapezius muscle. You can already see a lot of structures intertwined, arteries, veins, bones, muscles. So let's explain it. The trapezius muscle that we have removed is supplied by this artery here. That is the superficial cervical artery. It is also supplied by the superficial branch of the transverse cervical artery. If you look a little bit more from the back, we will see here the laminar scapulae muscle. It is innervated by the dorsal scapular artery, and that's this artery right here. This artery, as well as our previous artery, that means the a superficial cervical artery. The superficial cervical artery and the dorsal scapular artery, they both come from this little thing. You can see it here. That's the transverse cervical artery. The transverse cervical artery gives away the superficial branch that supplies the sternocleid, uh, that supplies the that, su that supplies the trapezius muscle that I had mentioned earlier. This branch was not illustrated. But let's explain these two muscles here. This is the rhomboid minor and the major muscle. For these muscles, it's very easy. These muscles are innervated by the dorsal scapular artery. There's these muscles here, the rhomboid minor and the major. Here now I have selected the rotator cuff muscles. The rotator cuff muscles are this one here, the teres minor, then you have the infraspinatus, and you have the supraspinatus. On this side of scapula, you have the subscapularis. These four muscles create the rotator cuff. Now let's start by explaining this here, infraspinatus. If you remember, I have explained that here, the axillary artery right here, 
it gives away one artery called the subscapular artery. Now if I remove this muscle, you will be able to see, well, the, here, here is the subscapular artery, right? The subscapular artery comes from the axillary artery. And the subscapular artery, that's something I have explained here, down there it gives away the thoracodorsal artery. However, on one side, you can see this branch right here. It goes thin and thin. And that supplies our muscle here, infraspinatus muscle, with blood. Now let's remove that. And let's look at the teres minor muscle. Now for teres minor, it gets a little bit interesting. Part of its blood comes here from the posterior humeral circumflex artery. However, another part of its blood comes here from the circumflex scapular artery artery. The circumflex scapular artery comes from the suprascapular artery. The sub suprascapular artery goes all the way here and down there it's hard to see it through all these structures but let me show you that on a clear model. The suprascapular artery simply arises from here that's the subclavian artery. Remember the subclavian artery. The subclavian artery here was creating the axillary artery, which was later creating the subscapular artery. Okay? So that's where the teres minor gets its blood from. And now we will remove the teres minor as well. Let's explain this muscle here. This is the supraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle gets its blood simply from this artery here that I have just mentioned. And that's the suprascapular artery. So let's remove that muscle as well. Now we have the subscapularis muscle. Logically, the subscapularis muscle gets its blood from the subscapular artery. That's this artery right here. Here we can see these two things. Here is the subscapular artery and the subscapular muscle. This artery supplies the muscle with the blood. Let's turn off the transparency mode and remove this muscle as well. Now you pretty much understand the blood supply. How about the blood drainage? Let's explain the veins quickly. It's very analog and a lot, it's very similar to the arteries. Here you have the circumflex humeral vein. Here, for example, you have the sub, suprascapular vein. And this was the suprascapular artery, this right here. Then here we had the dorsal scapular artery, while here is the dorsal scapular vein. Then again, down there we had the subscapular artery. Here we have the subscapular vein. Here is the circumflex scapular vein. And this was the subscapular vein. The subscapular vein, as you can see it, it goes here into the axillary vein. Remember, the subscapular artery was coming from the axillary artery. The other vein. Uh, the circumflex uh, scapular vein is actually draining blood here to the suprascapular vein, but it also drains the blood here to the lateral thoracic vein. This vein here, that it's like you can see it, like it's it's the cephalic vein, and the cephalic vein, as well as the axillary vein, they both go here to the subclavian vein. To watch lessons about other body parts, anatomy, and virtual dissection, you should visit my website, animatedanatomy.com. This is my last video on shoulder anatomy, and I'm quite exhausted. I did the entire shoulder anatomy, 
from bone, ligaments, the muscles, nerves, and veins and arteries. True. Sure. What we offer now is very simple. We offer you my very own animated lessons. We offer you my very own Anatomy Atlas and 3D models in one package. Lessons. We offer you my very own Anatomy Atlas.